It is 649. This is your morning in eight minutes. The man accused of killing his adopted brother is out of jail. Yeah, we're learning he's now living in Clinton. Michael Gray Jr. accused of murdering his eight year old adopted brother. He posted a hundred thousand dollar bond through a bonding company to get out of jail in June. How was he granted bond? Court documents show he is not considered a flight risk. Gray lived in the former family home in Halls. That's where authorities found his adopted brother's body buried in 2020. He came under investigation after authorities found another child buried in the yard of his parents' Rome County home. Gray Jr.'s parents are also charged with murder in this case and in Roan County. They're still in jail and scheduled to go to trial for the Roan County case next summer. A trial date for the Knox County case has not yet been set. We have more details on this complex case that we're following for you right now inside the WVLT News app. And right now, a deputy with the Anderson County Sheriff's Office still fighting for his life after being hit by a truck on the side of the road. Deputy Lucas Schaffner is in a medically induced coma right now. Highway Patrol says both he and his wife, Nicole, were off duty, fixing a chain on a dirt bike when another car hit them. This ha happened last week in Campbell County. Nicole is okay. Troopers say an off-duty Campbell County deputy, Raymond Serber, was behind the wheel of that truck that hit the couple. Charges are pending against both drivers. And right now, Knoxville city leaders working on a plan to help fund the new stadium in downtown Knoxville. Grading and utility work is already underway right now in the old city. Already, there are some curveballs for this project. Opening day pushed back a year to 2025. Construction costs are rising, leading to design changes. And a new plan calls for expanding what city officials are calling a TIF district. That will allow more federal money to help pay for some local costs. Both mayors, India Kincannon and Glenn Jacobs, are approving the new district. If you're headed to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, you may want to plan to bring a mask along with you. Visitors are now required to wear one inside all park buildings, regardless of vaccination status. Park officials say this is in line with the CDC guidance regarding areas with high transmission rates. And right now, two people still missing from the deadly flooding in eastern Kentucky. Governor Andy Bashir says the death toll stands at 38. Senator Rand Paul says he'll now send a letter to the White House and governor's office asking them to allow COVID-19 relief money to be used to help communities rebuild. Both, P both he and Senator Mitch McConnell toured the area yesterday. Oh, right now, 20 beagles rescued from a breeding mill in Virginia are in East Tennessee this morning. Young Williams Animal Center now in charge of finding them homes for adoption. They're just some of the 4,000 beagles rescued from Cumberland, Virginia. The facility was shut down following a Department of Justice lawsuit alleging dozens of animal welfare violations. The beagles kept in small cages with little access to food, water, or medicine. Most of the dogs are just puppies less than a year old. Young Williams says it'll be a few weeks until they're ready for adoption. We've got a link to their website right now in the WVLT News app. And new details this morning. Republican leaders now demanding investigations after the FBI executed a search warrant at former President Trump's estate in Florida. Well, the search is part of a month long investigation into his handling of White House documents. The National Archives claims it found 15 boxes of records at Mar-a-Lago earlier this year. Trump and federal investigators were in negotiations over the records. The FBI visited the resort in June. Federal law requires presidential records to be turned over to the National Archives. So far, the Justice Department is not commenting on what was taken by authorities during this week's search. Meanwhile, Trump says he will be questioned under oath today in a New York civil investigation by the state attorney general. That probe is looking into the former president's real estate dealings over the years. On his social media account, Trump called it a constitutional, uh, uh, excuse me, a continuation on the greatest witch hunt in U.S. history. $200 billion is on the way to help the country's production of semiconductor chips. These special chips will go inside new cars, phones, medical equipment. President Biden signing the new bill into law. Analysts say the new bill will help speed up supply chain and help bring prices down. And the president also expected to sign the PACT Act. Act. The long-awaited bill will expand access to VA health care and benefits for veterans who were exposed to toxins during the war. But there are concerns about how the VA will go about implementing the legislation amid its existing backlogs and a poor track record. And U.S. health officials are looking for ways to increase the supply of the monkeypox vaccine. The FDA authorizing a change into how the shots are given, potentially getting five times as many doses out of the 400,000 vials currently available. Researchers say the reduced amount is just as effective. And the July inflation report is due out in just a few hours. And for the first time in a long time, 
Listen to this. The numbers are expected to head in a good direction. Investors will use today's report for clues as to how aggressive the Federal Reserve might be in raising interest rates to fight rising prices. One of the big things driving inflation, of course, gas prices. But here's a look at what we're paying at the gas pump this morning. The Knoxville average around 375, state average 357. That national average creeping closer to the having a three in front of it. Right now it's at 401 this morning. Um, we're going to party when that thing hits 399. <laughs> Let's get to Whitney Turner. She's keeping her eye on the roads this morning with first alert traffic. We sent you a push about this multi vehicle crash on I 640 West just west of I-75, 275. This is a live look at that scene. They have opened the westbound lane, but all those vehicles in the right shoulder closing off the right lane traveling this way. So this is causing congestion starting around Broadway. Once you get past the 75, I-275 exit though, 640 West is moving without an issue toward I-40, your average speed there, 67 miles an hour. That's the only incident you need to worry about getting out the door. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. 655 now. Yes, those traffic messages come from the WVLT news app. The weather messages from our WVLT first alert weather app, especially as we have more heavy rain and lightning notifications to send you throughout the day today as they're nearby you because we do those scattered downpours. Remember building up to late today into tonight and then carry over leftovers for tomorrow. That's why we get these big spikes up in a half an inch to an inch of these blue bands in parts of our area, like parts of Monroe and Blunt and Knox County up into the Smokies, parts of Sevier, McMinn, Loudoun, picking up some very heavy rain here along the edge of Cumberland into Morgan clipping parts of Roan. Got some heavy rain in parts of Anderson to Union as well. At the Tennessee Kentucky line, Scott to Campbell Claiborne catching some of that heavy rain in parts of town. These purples to reds, now that's a spike up to a half, one and a half to even two inches of rain. So most of us really fall on this average three quarters of an inch of total rainfall between the two days with isolated higher amounts. Right now we're just getting going with clouds and a couple specks of showers. Again, we'll be tracking those for you coming up on the CW. Temperatures mild, upper 60s to low 70s. Got that Speck of rain coming up into Watts Bar and one driving up 25W through Campbell County. Again, a couple sprinkles with these beautiful clouds fanning out out ahead of scattered developing downpours and storms. And then that fronts 80% coverage to round out the day. Remember, we round out the week feeling the effects of that front. That's when the humidity drops, and that's what will give us some cooler mornings this weekend. I am making weekend morning plans. My plan is coffee, porch, sunrise. That's it. <laughs> yes, that's my plan. I love that plan. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. <laughs>